Hey everybody, welcome to my vlog, weekly vlog number 12. Thanks for joining me. Um, I wanted you to know that I've started uploading live gig footage that I'm recording from my video camera. I'm uploading this footage to my Patreon page, so it's exclusive access to this video footage if you just pay the five dollars per month uh, all-inclusive fee basically five dollars a month gives you access to all of the content that i've created up to this point including drum instructionals drum lessons career advice all sorts of stuff like this and i wanted to start including all of the not all of but much of the video footage that I'm taking from all my live gigs. Uh, oftentimes, I just take very small clips and post them either here on YouTube or on my Instagram. But uh, in order to preserve these performances and for me to look back upon them and for you to learn from them, you can, uh, many of them have uh, the click included in the in the in-ear monitor mix usually the way i i record the audio from the gig is i take a line straight out of my in-ear mixer so uh you're hearing exactly what i hear through my in-ears monitors in the in the video so it's it's an interesting reference point some things to cover from this past week, I was out again with the Matt Rogers artist, Nashville artist, Matt Rogers, uh, as a singer songwriter here in Nashville. And I've been working with him for a few months now. And uh, we'll typically go out on a weekend and do a couple of shows. So this past weekend, we were in Myrtle Beach one night and the next night we were in Chattanooga and both nights we were playing clubs. Uh, it was a Friday and a Saturday night. Long drive to Myrtle Beach from Nashville. Uh, we left 5.30, I think, well, van call was 5.30 in the morning. We probably left a little after that. As rough, you know, those are rough mornings for sure. You don't get a lot of sleep and it's tough getting up that early and getting there on time and loading up the van with your drums before the sun's rising and uh you know you're kind of running on empty in those mornings but you know you do what you can to, to be comfortable i brought a pillow and a blanket with me this time around which <laughs> i'm definitely going to do again it goes a long way i get cold easily in the van so it's important for me to wear pants and some sort of a jacket or a, a hoodie of some kind and, and bring a blanket with me. And, and so just kind of some quick advice for you folks out there. You're on the road. Always dress in layers. That's, that's really important. Um, I find that almost never do I want to wear shorts, even if it's 98 degrees outside more often than not you're in indoors or in a vehicle of some kind where there's air conditioning and that air conditioning is going to be freezing cold and and i would just rather wear long pants it's just it looks better it's more professional and you're just going to be way more comfortable and of course just wear layers uh a t-shirt a hoodie bring a bring a jacket of some sort. I bring a, a jean jacket that I have and hats, of course, go a long way. And if you're, if you're going to be in the cold weather, always gloves and a scarf as well. So just quick advice there for you. Some road, road advice from a, from a road dog. Um, these gigs I played with the Matt Rogers band, uh, you know, unfortunately, they weren't real well attended. Um, we were told that the gig we played in Myrtle Beach, it was toward the end of their peak season. So we weren't really sure what to expect. But, you know, it's a long drive there and you get there and 
geez, you wish there was more people around and, and to play for. That said, there were, there were, it was a good crowd. It was a it, small but mighty. Uh, they definitely were into the music and that's, that's always cool. That certainly helps. Um, the thing I found most frustrating about this particular venue was that, again, we drive all, all day to get there. I, I don't know how many hours it was. I was asleep for part of it, so I, I'm not counting the hours, but it was a good long, I mean, we probably didn't get in until 4 p.m., 5 p.m. to the club, and we left at 6 a.m., so whatever that is, I don't know, 10 hours? Not, something like that. Anyway, you get there, you set up, and we're, they weren't allowing us to sound check. It literally, I couldn't make any noise. Like, I'm trying to make sure my drums are in tune. Just by hit, you know, just hitting a tom, we weren't allowed to make any noise like that because I guess they're having dinner, and I, I don't, I don't know why, but I can't figure it out. You're a music venue. You hire bands from out of town to come in to play your venue with a sound man and a sound system, yet you don't allow us to sound check or make or even make any noise, just acoustically. That makes zero sense to me. And I just I don't I don't get it. I don't know what 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 is the deal there. I don't know. What's the deal there? Anyway, um, you know, we made it work. You know, we barely had any time because we, you know, again, we get there and by the time everything is set up and sound, not sound checked, but just lines are run. We made sure we had signal through the mics just by tapping them and that sort of thing. We barely had time to get to the hotel, which was just five minutes away, but still get checked in to the hotel. Of course, I had like water on the floor of my hotel room, so I had to call maintenance and deal with this baloney. And, uh, you know, I, they didn't even like come until like half an hour later. So I ended up using a bunch of towels and just mopping up the, the mess that was there. The water was from the air conditioner that was in the wall unit and it was just some for some reason I guess it was just leaking water all over the floor and it made a big mess anyway it got cleaned up in the end and it wasn't a problem after that but you know we barely had time to just grab a shower and get changed and ready for the show and head right back to the venue to play the show so you know, it sounds glamorous. We're in Myrtle Beach, right? You think like, oh, we have time to go to the beach and check out whatever Myrtle Beach has to offer. No, there's no time, none at all. Play the show, get out of there. By the time you pack up the van again, get back to the hotel room, get some sleep. We gotta leave, you know, 10 a.m. the next morning to make it to the next venue, which is Chattanooga. Again, another long drive. So get to the venue this time in Chattanooga. Uh, big stage, wonderful space, wonderful club, nice sounding room, loud, loud room, very loud. Uh, big sort of almost like airplane hangar type of space that we were in. Uh, but just loud, like snare drum, bam, holy cow. But cool, you know, had a great mix there. Um, big, big, nice drum riser. Ooh, I love a nice drum riser. Nice, solid drum riser. Doesn't, doesn't shake or vibrate or anything like that. Very, very nice, uh, solid uh, ground to set up on. Lots of space. Everybody could, you know, it was, like, it was basically the perfect size stage for a band like this. And again, poorly attended. Unfortunately, this time the club owners said, oh yeah, there's some big festival that's happening three blocks down from here. And that's where everybody is on a Saturday night like this is. 
So, you know, we had some people, again, it's not like the place was empty by any means, but geez, you know, on a Saturday night, you'd think the place would be packed. It'd be college kids. It, it should be jam packed. It wasn't jam packed. So kind of lacking in the, in the energy department there, but you just, in those instances, you just have to bring it. You just have to show up and be ready to play and just play for yourself and your bandmates and whoever might be listening in the, you know, front row or whatever. Um, but good gig nonetheless. And a little bit of a different gig. It was longer gig than what, what we're used to playing. Usually we play either one full set. It's like 90 minutes or two sets that are, you know, probably around two hours long ish. This was three one hour sets. So we had an extra long set list that we were dealing with some new tunes that we hadn't played before, some new cover tunes that we were uh, attempting. <laughs> and so it made it for an interesting night, nonetheless. Um, I ran into, uh, well, I had, I had texted a friend who was who lived in the area and I met up with him real quick before, you know, while we were, we were still setting up. So uh, it was just great to see to see him, uh, Johnny, if you're watching, what's up, dude? Um, yeah. So just kind of annoying, kind of not annoying, but just some frustrating stuff there as far as that weekend went. Um, later on in the week, I played with the Alley Cutter Band again, downtown in Nashville at Aldine's. I've talked about that gig before. It's V drums. It's it's a four hour job. It's it's you know there's no breaks. Although Ali does give us a nice little 10, 15 minute break ish you know, while she sings acoustic, and we can go to the bar and order up some food and a drink or two or whatever. Um, you know, geez. All I'll say is Ali just makes it as easy as possible. It's low stress. There's no drama. She's she's not picky about the way songs are played. She'll play songs that sometimes I don't even know. And you just she's cool with you just making it up as you go. And so you just got to be kind of open and be a team player and just be ready to, you know, just kind of bring it and you know, just kind of fake it till you make it kind of thing on, on, on those songs that you don't know that some, sometimes you get a request and Allie might know it, but the rest of us don't know it. And we're just kind of, it's a weird feeling to do that. I got to say, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't know if I'll ever be comfortable with that. I'm super comfortable with improvising and making, making stuff up. But when it comes to playing a song that I've never heard before <laughs> that somebody's paying us money to hear. That's a weird, that's a weird thing. Like I, I've never really had to do that anywhere else. Typically if you, the band doesn't know the song, you just don't play the song. So anyway, I don't know. I'm still trying to come to terms with that. And I, it's just hard when the bass player doesn't know the song and the drummer doesn't know the song and maybe the guitar player, maybe he's heard it before, but he doesn't really know the song either. Like, you know, none of us ever played this song. That is a weird thing, but that's unique to Nashville. I'll say that I think anyway, anyway, um, the night after that, I played a, a wedding with, uh, Emerald Empire Band, which is sort of like an agency band. They you, they book these these weddings and events and they throw a band together. It could be anybody. It could be anybody from their Rolodex of musicians. So they have musicians on from every instrument, who knows how many deep. Uh, you know, they probably have at least a dozen, if not more, uh, musicians for each instrument 
And so they book these gigs and they're up for grabs. And um, so I was, I was on the, I was on this one, you know, and I said yes to it. And um, it was in this really terrible acoustic room. Um, it was on a, well, the, the, the wedding was on this, it was called the Bell Mead Plantation, I think it was called, or there's, there's a winery there and it, it's a little bit uh, vague as to what, what exactly is happening there, but it's an event space. Let's just call it an event space. And they, I've played weddings there before in the past. So I knew this room, I knew that it was extremely boomy in this room. Bare bones, I mean, we were struggling to find outlets to to power the band with in this in this space that we were in. No stage, not even a portable stage, just set up on the floor and go. And so knowing all this, I purposely brought my Ludwig 1965 club date kit because uh, A, it's really easy to move around, it's lightweight, it's easy to set up and tear down, but even more important than that, it's a quieter kit. It's a three ply shell kit. It's just, it doesn't, it's not as loud as my other drum kits. So it made sense to bring that kit because I knew that I'd be helping myself and everybody else out in the room just by not having a, a, a huge sounding kit. It's a vintage kit. It's kind of dark. It's kind of mellow. It's got, you know, it's not a super bright or, or loud kit. So I took a quick video of me playing this drum kit, just hitting the drums a little bit before everybody showed up. So you could hear the, the, the reverb in the room, the natural reverb in the room, which by itself is cool, but you know, you, you throw a hundred people in the room and you know, the full band and it's just, it's chaotic. I mean, it's crazy. And why do you have an event space where you host bands like this all the time? And why do you not treat the room acoustically to make things sound good? You'd think that these owners would maybe invest some money into all that, but no. People listen with their eyes, I guess. Lastly, I played a session over the week here at home. It was a remote session here from my home studio. Uh, this is a this was a Christmas song that uh, was written, and I was asked to play drums on it from my good friend Justin Mather, and I've worked with him many, 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 many times over the years, and super grateful for my relationship with Justin. Um, on this particular song, I ended up trying three or four different snare drums. I think I went through four snare drums and finally settled on the fourth snare before I really found the right timbre, the right tuning, the right, just the right fit for this, for this tune and this groove and just had to sit in the mix the, the, the right way. Uh, ended up landing on my Ludwig hammered bronze snare drum, which is a prized possession that I have and have owned since the early 2000s when I lived in New York. I, I bought that drum in New York City uh, because I was trying to be uh, Bill Stewart at the time. <laughs> And that was the drum that Bill Stewart was using, at least back then, pretty much 100% of the time. So I really wanted to get his sound. And I guess I'm just a copycat in some ways, but I just fell in love with Bill Stewart's sound overall, his whole overall sound, but especially that snare sound. So I went out and bought that drum. 
little did I know all these years later that that drum would pretty much double in value, uh, if not even more, because uh, as far as I know, that drum's not even being made anymore. Although I'm hearing rumors now, I think I read something just recently that maybe Ludwig is starting to reissue the hammered bronze, or maybe it's not hammered anymore. Maybe it's just a straight up bronze shell. In any case, I like the hammered version and I've used this drum on lots of different sessions over the years. Turns out it's a great Nashville drum too. It, it goes low and gushy and has a big, big sound and rich and defined and a little bit different than brass, a little darker, a little more, uh, a little more overtones to this drum, a little more, I, I kind of liken it to if a brass drum, let's call a brass drum like an Avidus Zildjian, the hammered bronze would be the K, the old K version of that. That's, I think that's the best comparison I could make. In any case, finally found the, the right snare drum for this particular song. Um, did, I don't know, three, four, five takes of it and uh, sent it out for approval. Justin approved, I believe it was the fifth take, if my memory serves. Um, yeah, uh, for this particular session, I got to, I got a chance to use some of the mics that uh, I'm, I've been borrowing from my neighbor. My, I have a neighbor who lives across the street. He just moved in earlier this year. His name is Matt Fox, Matthew Fox. Uh, he moved here from the Minneapolis area and he's uh, owned and operated a studio for many years and he's a, a wonderful wealth of information. He, the guy is insanely smart, I'll just say that, <laughs> when it comes to anything, really. I mean, it seems like he, he, he's just very well read. And uh, in any case, he has these microphones, he has a whole microphone collection uh, in his house, and he brought over these mics couple of them that he owns and I got a chance to use these on this session. Uh, one of them is a AEA ribbon mic that I used in the, the crotch position, what I call the crotch position, sort of like over the kick drum pointed at the snare drum but still picking up the, the two rack, the rack, the one rack tom and the floor tom. So equidistant from the snare, the kick beater, the rack tom and the floor tom. So if you just draw lines between those, that's where that mic goes. So uh, it's a great, great position for, for a mic like that. And let's see what else. I was also using the snare mic that he lent me. It's a mic that he said he built himself. So it's a small diaphragm condenser. I'm not exactly sure if there's, I don't know what he used, what what's inside of it. He says it's packed tight, but I don't know what the, the inner workings are. I don't know what the, the capsule is or, or what even pattern it is. I have no idea, but it's a, it sounds great on a snare drum. I'll just say that. Kind of looks like a, like a Neumann uh, microphone, like a small diaphragm Neumann, but it's not a Neumann. Um, and so that, those are the two mics that I used on this particular session. This other session that I just finished, I think I finished it today. I have yet to send it out, but I think I've accomplished what I set out to. Uh, today I've been using these other overhead mics. I don't know if you can see them here in the background, but the, uh, they are, um, oh gosh. Now I have my memory, like Rodell or something. What is the company? Uh, gosh. Ro Roswell, Roswell Mini K67. Roswell Mini K67. They're large diaphragm condensers. They're, they're meant to be like a Neumann U67 copy. Um, they sound glorious. <laughs> I'll just say that as overhead mics, you could, I mean, they're very versatile mics. I'm sure you could use them. You could use them for vocals. 
I could put them in front of the kit out here as room mics. I could put put one outside of the bass drum here, maybe a couple feet off, pointing at the head. Um, many, many, many uses for a microphone like that. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, with the Christmas tune, I would just lay down some uh, percussion, obviously some sleigh bells. I had some triangle on there, some shaker, and what was the other thing that I used? Um, can't remember. Oh, tambourine, tambourine. So yeah, um, standard stuff, you know. So that's basically it. Uh, like and subscribe as always. Don't forget, I have a Patreon page. Join me on Patreon, like I recommended at the beginning of this video. Five bucks a month, www.patreon.com slash Act. Does anybody say www? You don't even need to type it anymore. Why do I? I'm not even going to say that anymore. Patreon.com slash Act. Go there, subscribe. It's five bucks a month. It's literally less than a coffee at Starbucks. Literally. So it gives you all this access to all this great information and content that I've created over the past few years that I've been doing the Patreon. Uh, so please join me there. I, 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 I need more subscribers, really. For what's on there, there should be more people subscribing to this. It's a gold mine. It'll be well worth it. You will not regret it, I promise you. And you can always cancel at any time without any fees. So don't forget about that. Uh, if you want to book a lesson with me, go to my website, brianzack.com. I'm easy to find online. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. And I'm on, obviously, YouTube. And I'm on Twitter as well. So really easy to find. Just look up my name and shoot me a comment or shoot me a message or a private message or a direct message, depending on what platform you're on. And we can book a lesson with you and you can tell me all the things that you want to work on and learn and get better at. And uh, we'll move on from there. I'll just, I'll book a, a consultation phone call with you and we'll discuss all these things that you want to do and your, your goals and your, your weaknesses and your all that stuff and we'll figure all that out um so once again thanks for joining me here and i will see you on the next video take care guys